All righty. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Claire. I am from the virtual team uh, and we help uh, people invest in the brands they love. I'm de delighted today to be joined by Yujing and Chase from the Sneaker Laundry. Welcome. Hello. Hey guys. Now, um, the first thing I'd like to do is to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which I'm tuning in from. So, Birchall is based on the one of the Kul the Wandry people's land of the Kulin Nation, and we do pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Uh, I know that the Sneaker Wandry's main hub is based on the same lands as well. So, you know, a welcome, and we welcome you to wherever you are beaming from today, from around Australia and the world. Now, for today's webinar, the way that we're going to run today's session. So Eugene and Chase are going to take us through a little bit of a slide deck about their company, which will run for approximately 20 minutes. Uh, and then we'll open up to the audience for Q&A. So if you have a question uh, you'd like to ask us, please use the Q&A bot down the bottom. Uh, I will make it so everyone can see the questions that are being asked. And if there is a question that you would like answered in particular, please remember to upvote it uh, and we'll answer questions there. Please do not use the chat bot. Please use the Q&A box to ask your questions. Uh, and we look forward to answering them. Today's session will go for an hour, and if we run out of time to answer the questions, we will be saving all of your questions, sending them to the Sneaker Laundry team, and they will be able to answer them uh, in an email after today's video. Uh, final note, uh, please remind uh, a reminder that today's session is uh, not a replacement for the offer document or for the investment information. It is an informational session about the company and what Sneaker Laundry does. So we welcome everyone here. We hope you enjoy today's session. And without further ado, I'll pass over to Eugene and Chase to take it away. Cool, cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Eugene. Yeah, I'm Chase. Uh, and there we go. <laughs> Um, hopefully we don't bore too much of this presentation. Uh, we're normally a bit more fun in real life. Uh, so we've put together a bit of a presentation to show you guys what we're about, uh, our team, uh, how we've got here uh, and where we plan to go uh, after this race, which has just been phenomenal. Um, so I'm gonna kick things off with, with actually just a little note. Um, you know, we started in 2017, uh, you know, in a little laneway in Melbourne when many people just had no idea what sneaker cleaning was. Uh, many people were like, oh, no, I don't know why I'd clean my shoes. Um, but yeah, fast forward, you know, four, four and a half years and it's been nothing short of awesome. So I'm going to let Chase take you through uh, and start with that. Yeah. So the biggest reason why we're here, um, one of the things that we notice is that there's a lot of throwaway culture in our world and a lot of overconsumption, in, especially when it comes to shoes. Now, through like realizing that, we also realize that a lot of people don't actually know how to clean their shoes. They don't know how to maintain them. And through that, they also don't know that a pair of shoes should last you upwards to over a decade. So, you know, like in America alone, there's over about 300 million pairs of shoes being thrown away yearly. And you know, one little fact here that a lot of people don't know is that um, it takes about 30 to 40 years for a pair of shoes to decompose. And that sitting in landfill is just not good for the planet. Um, when we opened our doors, another problem that we saw is that um, a lot of people weren't cleaning their shoes, mainly, like I said, they didn't know how, but they also didn't have products to do it with. So, you know, that's that's what we stepped in to do. You know, the, the, <clears throat> uh, the sneaker care market's pretty uncatered for the most part. And it was very important to us that we stepped in, provided a solution and, you know, tried to preserve this planet the best that we can. Yeah. So we do have a couple of solutions, uh, three main ones, if I'm being honest with you. So uh, the first one was obviously the service, the brick and mortar, actual physical shop that people can come in and drop their shoes off. Um, so people were coming in and, you know, through our customers actually coming into the store, we actually, you know, see a lot more problems through them just having conversations with us. So our customers coming into the store and asking us point blank, how do you clean a pair of shoes? I've never seen anything like this before. Really triggered us, triggered in our brain for us to go and actually sell our products to these people. If they're asking for it, why wouldn't we provide it, provide them with it? Um, so obviously we've got the services where anyone can drop off. Uh, you can ship from anywhere in Australia if you want to. You can actually, you can jump on a plane if you want to come down to Melbourne and actually visit us in the store. Or if you live in Melbourne, drive on down, walk on down, drop your shoes off, come back, you know, three, four days later, depending on how busy we are, if I'm being totally honest with you, and your shoes will be looking 
much better than they were when you dropped them off. Now, if you don't have the time to wait that long, you can obviously buy our products and do it at home yourself. Now, the difference between our products, like I've, I've personally been in this industry for a very long time. It's well over 10 years now. And one thing that I personally noticed is that a lot of people just like to, you know, grab a product, look at it and just go, yeah, this will work and just launch it out to whoever they hope will buy it. But that's not how we approach things at all. Like when it comes to our products, we have spent, there, there's some products that we have, we spent upwards to a month just testing it out on different materials, making sure that it's going to work every single time, not some of the time, and just making sure that every single customer that actually receives this product is going to be using the exact same thing that we use personally in store to make sure that their shoes are clean. Now, the third problem is that we noticed that there's also a lot of, um, a lot of people really don't know how to actually store their shoes. And that creates like a pretty big mess in some people's homes. Like I personally know a lot of people who own upwards to hundreds, if not thousands of pairs of shoes. And uh, yeah, their, their homes are not that tidy. So uh, we actually offer some of the widest selection in Australia in terms of actual sneaker storage. We have a lot of drop front boxes. So you can actually go in and look at these big collections of shoes and actually feel comfortable standing in the room rather than just be surrounded by a pile of shoes, boxes everywhere. Because at the end of the day, you don't want your sneaker collection room to look like the landfill that we're trying to avoid. <laughs> so um, yeah, we are definitely, you know, coming to the table with as many solutions as we can when it comes to our products. You know, when we meet a problem, we find the solution. We could not figure out, <clears throat> we, we were noticing that customers can figure out how to get certain stains out of their shoes. So we developed a stain remover. We noticed that when we were personally cleaning shoes, we create a big mess. So we went and created a sneaker cleaning mat that makes it easy for you just to pick it up and clean your mess in literally one motion. So as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure Eugene would agree, there's really not a problem that you can present to us that we will not find a solution for. So we, we are the ticket. I'm a bit worried. I just dared a lot of people to, to <laughs> but um, anyway, um, we'll talk about why us, why the sneaker laundry. I think um, the three main reasons we, we really pride ourselves on is that we are the information hub um, and we love innovating as Chase has already mentioned. Um, and the third one is the systems and processes. So if information hub, um, Chase alone has over 10 million views in YouTube cleaning and restoring sneakers. You know, um, what we found was that as we taught our customers how to clean sneakers, they built more trust in us and they built more trust in our brand. And whenever they did want to clean the sneakers or had a problem with clean sneakers, they came right back to us as well. So we really pride ourselves in being the information hub. We don't hold many secrets close to our chest. And the name of the game for us is just to put the information out there as readily available as possible. And after you buy a product, you're not sure how to use it. You know, you can hit us up on any of our socials, give us a call. Um, email us and we'll sort of get back to you with advice on how to do it. Um, as Chase mentioned before, innovation is a huge part of our team. Um, we're a very, very innovative team at heart. It's just, it just comes to us naturally. Um, we, we're cleaning shoes and we realize, like, for example, hey, dude, like these stains are pretty tough to budge. Surely there's a better way to attack this. Cool, boom, stain remover came up. Hey, dude, there's a lot of sneakers that are just re look really good, that are extremely uncomfortable. Boom, let's create our own insults, you know. Um, the sneaker cleaning mat was one of the, um, was definitely one that we, we embrace very heavily in our store and our customers are starting to pick up now as well. Um, and, and yeah, the, the list just goes on. And even in January, we released our own line of NFTs as well uh, in an effort to bridge the gap between uh, NFT and sort of retail utilization. Uh, and yeah, uh, oh, sorry, let's, let me touch on systems and processes. Uh, when we first started a little store, um, you know, we, we just sort of, oh, it's, you know, let's just clean, 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 clean. And very quickly we realized, Hey, we need a bigger team. We need uh, a more efficient way to do things. Uh, and gradually we, we migrated our, our, our sort of processes online to the point where now, uh, even our training programs are online, uh, for new staff. And if they ever forget this refresher courses and this sort of like, uh, online daily checklist on how to run. Uh, each store as and each facet of the business as efficiently as possible. Um, and so, yeah, we've used the Head Start um, to refine our product offering. And uh, through COVID, especially, we've sort of uh, refined that business model too, which will sort of show you more about it later on through some statistics. Um, so, yeah, this is the team. 
Um, let's start off with me. I'll self-introduce myself a little bit. I'll hand it off to Chase to introduce himself to. Um, I, I have a background in startups, uh, but before that, uh, I'm actually at Monash Uni. I've graduated with a double degree in law and commerce. And during COVID, I went back and did my practical legal training just to upskill. So I'm actually an Australian solicitor, but I've never worked a day in my life as an actual solicitor. So I'd call myself failed, a failed lawyer or anything. Um, and, uh, you know, I, ha I will have uh, experience in multiple businesses. I own a nightclub, a uh, wedding venue and a content creation agency of which networks have really helped put the business where it is today. Um, but yeah, Sneaker Laundry is my baby and has been my baby for the last four years. So we've been full time on this business. Um, and yeah, like I, I handle the business development, business management um, and e-commerce as well as digital marketing side of the business. Uh, so as the business and Chase is what class COO. He handles our operations, um, our operations and fulfillments. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Chase to introduce himself. And I'm Chase and uh, you would probably know me better from YouTube, if I'm being totally honest with you. That's where my name came from. Um, my background is definitely not as uh, <clears throat> wide as Eugene's. I have no degrees, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest with you guys, but um, it has not stopped me from reaching every goal that I want to achieve personally. Uh, when, I, when I see something right there in front of me, um, it's really a no-brainer for me to reach out and go get it. Um, I've accumulated over 10 million views on YouTube, over 84,000 subscribers. It might be at 85,000 subscribers now. Um, but um, I've built that reputation up just based off of trust, kind of what Eugene talked about previously. Um, just presenting all information that I can in an honest, transparent fashion. So anyone like I was talking about previously can do this kind of stuff at home. Um, but, you know, I've also got a lot of customer service experience underneath my belt as well so i know how to make anyone that comes into our store feel like they're part of our family and <clears throat> pardon me yeah it's um it's been quite the wild ride if i'm being totally honest it all started for me uh in an apartment in sydney just filming myself painting sneakers and now i'm on a virtual zoom meeting <laughs> with one of my best friends <laughs> But, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, our team's expanded over the years and even through COVID, we've expanded our team uh, very nicely. Um, we've got Kevin, uh, our, our store manager in the city now, um, and we've got really awesome uh, mentors, which we've got to meet along the way, uh, financial advisors, customer service team, Shopify development, and last but definitely not least, we've got a really awesome team of part-timers and casuals that work with us. Um, and we're definitely looking to continually grow that uh, in the next year. Features. Ooh. Yeah, so as you guys can see here, we've been featured uh, quite a bit, to be totally honest with you. Um, recently, we were on 7 News and Sunrise TV. Those are pretty surreal experiences. Uh, to do that we've had a lot of articles um, in newspapers we've shown up on the sydney morning herald we've been in the guardian the age I've, i believe we've been in the herald sun multiple times if i'm not mistaken eugene i feel like i feel like we've yes. popped up in herald sun a handful of times and um sneaker freaker is a, a community is the best way to put it they hold a lot of sneaker related events and there isn't an event that they do where they don't reach out to us where they want our presence in their uh, what would you call it it wouldn't be a shop it'd be an event and be at their event so, uh yeah we had i mean far out daily mail as well <clears throat> a lot of news radio i've got an interview coming up pretty soon too and you can see right here we've been in the herald sun uh in the next slide as well i know that you'd see um all of our screenshots from you know all all, all of Every major city in Australia picked us up for seven news. You'll see us over here on Sunrise TV. You'll see the Herald Sun, the Daily Mail article. Uh, people love us. <laughs> they, they, they just want to keep on posting about us. Um, on top of those features, we've also done some pretty impressive collaborations. Being from the sneaker community myself, obviously, I see two logos on here with Puma and Nike. Uh, dreams come true. Absolute dreams come true. You see Puma and Nike logos everywhere you walk anywhere in the world pretty much you know we did um sneaker customization with puma and dolce and gabbana uh there was a cross promotional 
uh, collaboration with Nike as well. Um, I'm not 100% sure if everyone that's listening right now has heard, but we do a homeless drive every single year and we collaborate directly with the city of Melbourne to do that. Um, we've also collaborated with a couple of sneaker stores where we actually show up and give our physical presence there with like a pop-up or a sneaker drop-off where you'd see sneaker, sneaker, eh, secret sneaker store. They could use a better name. That was hard to say. And underrated Melbourne as well. And then you got Jack, you got Jack Oliver Golf, where they make golf shoes and they provide their customers with our sneaker cleaning kits. Because if you ask me, if you ask Eugene and any one of our customers, they would tell you that our products are definitely the ones that you want to be cleaning your shoes with. So that Jack Oliver one doesn't even surprise me. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, let me take it away. Uh, <laughs> just some, just a quick, just some quick summary and attraction. Um, yeah, we've, we've, we've um, faced fa fairly steady year-on-year -year traction uh, growth in our total sales. That's the first uh, table up top. Um, as you can see, a little bit of a slump in uh, quarter three or four in 2019, um, but we've picked it right back up ever since. And you'll see that even through COVID, which was, I think, quarter one of 2020, we grew, we grew right through that and up until now. A large portion of that was even though our stores were down, we focus a lot of our effort towards e-commerce um, and international business as well. So during this period, we replaced a lot of our store foot traffic in, um, with product sales. We were very heavily invested online. We did a lot more website development, uh, digital marketing, um, and as well as like uh, really optimizing things around our store. One of the biggest things we aimed to do was actually to increase the average order value which is quite tough in an industry where we technically sell, you know, shoe, well, we sell shoe cleaning kits, which aren't very expensive because we're trying to be affordable. Um, but we still did it. And you can notice that in around quarter one in the, border, in the, in the, in the bottom uh, table, around quarter one of 20, uh, uh, 2020, which is right when COVID hit, in the midst of it all, we increased our average order value uh, drastically. Um, and we have been, I guess, gradually increasing it still. Um, so we're quite proud of that. Uh, but most of that came from website optimization and product bundling. We bundled a lot of our products together. We started enticing people to spend more on our website and we started stocking more products because we found when we had more products on our website, people were spending more and more likely to convert as well. Um, that's our sessions across our website alone. We don't count the foot traffic, unfortunately, but we do count the traffic to our website. Um, as you can see, it has steadily grown uh, every uh, quarter, uh, month on month as well, for, or quarter on quarter for the last uh, three to four years. Um, we have had amazing traction through our social media as well. We've had over 22,000 Instagram followers, over 16,000 people subscribe to our emails and over 15,000 people on Facebook. Um, there is a YouTube statistic I've left that out, unfortunately, but as Chase has mentioned, um, his PLA has already racked up more than 10 million views on his YouTube. Um, Revenue to date, we've done uh, 1.2 mil. Uh, and in the last half financial year from December, uh, from July to December 2021, uh, we have done $227,000 in sales uh, with 25,000 sneakers cleaned. And to date, we've received 1,400 EOIs uh, on our virtual campaign, which is just mind blowing. I think pretty sure today it might be 1,500, um, but it, it has just been insane. The response has just been absolutely mind-blowing um just briefly uh on the market opportunity that exists uh for us we you know the australian footwear market is is uh forecasted to be 3.7 billion uh by 2025 um we obviously aren't in the footwear market we supplement we, we we supplement the footwear market and we support the footwear market um and eat and since half our business okay at the moment it's currently e-commerce um with Australian e-commerce growing 22% in 2020, um, we're well positioned to sort of capture the both uh, both markets. Uh, globally, which is really our goal and where we want to be uh, within the next three to four years, uh, the shoe care market itself is 4.6 billion US dollars and projected to be 5.5 billion by 2027. And it's a lot of big numbers, uh, but I am going to pass it over to Chase to tell you how we're going to get there. Yeah, exactly. So um, the biggest thing we want to do is have a flagship store in every major city in Australia. So you got Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth. We'd love to do that w within 24 months of this raise. 
and um, you know, aside from our flagship stores, obviously we want to buckle down on digital marketing. Um, we'd be acquiring customers directly through improving and increasing our digital funnels um, for all of our products. Um, and then obviously we'd like to move on partnerships as well. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of really cool collaborations, but that doesn't mean we, we don't want to do more. We'd like to increase those collaborations and uh, marketing activations like we have in the past with those collaborations that I was mentioning. And then the distributors, uh, like, look, long story short, we want to get our product distributed pretty much every, you know, <clears throat> sorry, we want to get our product distributed to every major retailer that we, that we can, um, you know, especially if they cater to, you know, fat, uh, foot, footwear and fashion. It's, you know, anywhere that we can go to acquire more customers is definitely, definitely where we want to head. Cool. So this is really, I, we feel like the best, well, the best slides really address why, why we're currently fundraising um, and why equity crowdfunding. Um, you know, over the last four years, we, we spent a lot of time every day. Our goal is to just optimize and improve the business, the, the team, the processes and the systems. Um, and we're finally at a point where we're confident that we have the business model and the framework to scale the business now. Um, and raising funds really just accelerates our, our really, really ambitious plans to tackle the $5 billion UK industry globally. Um, and I guess when it comes to why equity crowdfunding, um, we, we, we never forget that we're a business built on the support from the people. Um, the very first time I had the idea for the sneaker laundry, um, I, I could barely afford to, to put it together. And we had friends uh, chip in money um, to give us what we needed over lunch to, to start the business. And I'll never forget that. And um, to us, like having the support all the way until today has been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, and, you know, we were a new concept that many people doubted and we could only really have taken off and thrived with the support of everyone uh, in the community, everyone that came across us that just backed us and everything we do. Um, and we acknowledge that, we appreciate that. And I think the, 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 the sort of the thought, the thought of a hundred of hundreds of investors coming on board initially scared us, but I think now it excites us more than anything. Um, having hundreds of passionate individuals who will believe in your business enough to reach into their pockets, you know, to, to sort of support every release and, and new locations and be interested in what you're doing. Um, to us, we believe that is a really rare and unique opportunity um, in itself and a really rare and unique advantage for us as a business and as a growing business trying to establish itself all across Australia. So, yeah, I guess, um, as Chase mentioned already, um, why, you know, why are we, why are we fundraising, what the, our goals are, and really this is, you know, where the money's going to go to. We want to have physical locations in the major cities, as Chase mentioned. Um, the one thing we have lacked uh, through lack of time and also expertise is our search engine optimization and marketing. We have done really well on Facebook and Instagram, but um, Google has been largely lacking um, and we're going to spend a lot of time doing that as well as optimizing our website for that. Um, we have been starting to stock in a lot of Australian stores now. I think we're currently in 13, uh, 13 stores altogether, but we want more. Like We want to be everywhere. Um, and by the end of 2024, we hope to be in five international locations as well. So we've set a real minimum for the raise at $250,000 a year. Um, and we sort of planned three scenarios out of how this is going to go. Cause unfortunately we can't control the people and how this race is going to pan out. I love to say the responses have been amazing and everything indicates to an awesome race, but we're mildly paranoid as always. So here we go. We've got three, three scenarios, a 250K worst case scenario, a 700K good case scenario and a $1 million dream run race. Um, we wanted to, uh, show you roughly what we'll show you where the money is going and where we hope to spend the money um, in a minimum raise uh, of $250,000. Um, we will scale back the international expansion plans and we'll continue to focus our um, cash resources on expanding Australian retail as well as product placement. Um, we, for us, like, especially this virtual race, um, fundraising has been extremely time consuming and, um, and uh, it's really stretches our team. And that's why we've taken into this consideration to try and get to the one mil dream run scenario so that we don't have to raise funds again um, for at least the next three to four years. And we're hoping that will put us in a really awesome cash flow position where we don't have to raise funds in future. 
um, you know, we want to spend our time growing the business and developing the business. And the last thing we want to do is, is having another raise that dilutes our current investors and the new investors coming on board. So, um, you know, in a $700,000 scenario, uh, we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll be able to spend more in our retail expansion in Australia, uh, working capital, which has been our goal to grow our team um, and have all the staff on board and build a really good, even better culture around it. Um, we'll spend even more in marketing and customer acquisition, like we said, mostly around uh, SEO and SEM. Uh, we'll get to the new of a wholesale expansion and we'll, uh, sorry, that last row is, um, uh, I've done a little boo-boo there. Um, Sorry, that last row is meant to be international expansion. I've, I've, I've marked that up. So instead of retail expansion on the bottom row, that's international expansion. Um, so yeah, um, on the 250,000, we won't be doing international expansion. On the 700,000 and the $1 million raise, we will be doing the expansion, uh, international expansions. Uh, yeah, so um, let me take that through to our vision. Um, our vision is to be the sneaker care brand of the world. Um, you know, we do want to champion change in an industry where shoes could one day last your lifetime. Um, and, and we'll continue to do that through providing our products, our services, and, you know, at, at a very affordable rate to anyone across the world. So to finish it off, I just want to thank you guys all for listening to our presentation. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous, but um, yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Eugene and Chase. I'll get you to stop sharing your screen and we can hop into the Q&A for the next 30 minutes. Um, an amazing presentation. And, you know, we have well over 100 people who are attending today's webinar who are listening in. So, you know, a good, a good reason to be nervous, but um, I'm sure we've got a few great questions that are coming through that we can't wait to ask. Now, I did say at the start of the session that they, you would be able to upvote questions. Um, I realised I forgot to press the button that lets you toggle on that. So what I will do is run through the questions as they've come in. If you've asked a question in the chat, uh, please copy and paste your question into the Q&A box because that is where I will be sourcing my questions from. But uh, going down the list, uh, and we'll talk about uh, the investment uh, process, investing on virtual and what sort of information can and cannot be shared with retail investors through a platform like us uh, towards the end of the Q&A. But hopping into the first question uh, for Chase and Eugene, uh, is the cleaning all done by hand? How scalable is manual cleaning? And will any of the cleaning become automated by machinery as you grow? I mean, yeah, so <clears throat> most of the cleaning is done by hand. But uh, we are, uh, over time, we have sort of made our process more efficient. Um, we sort of moved into electric brushes and looking into uh, more and more machinery we can use um, by hand. The reason why there isn't, there, there has been machines that they've tried to put out for sort of one trick pony solutions and it just doesn't work. And we tried it and tested it. Their shoes these days are just made of too many materials um to just have a one trick solution and no one has actually managed to come up with a solution for that just yet maybe we're the ones to do it um but at the moment most uh most shoe cleaning machines so to speak actually cause more damage than anything and the with the price of the shoes coming into our stores it's, it's just not worth it at the moment to take the risk and do, does the sneaker laundry at the moment offer franchise or plan to in the future Within Australia at the moment, our plan for the next two to three, for the next two years um, is to open our flagship stores in each major city first. Um, once we establish uh, our presence there and uh, then we want, then we might look into expanding to franchises when the industry is more ready. Fantastic. Uh, the next question has come through. Um, what is the best selling product on the online store? Um, and in your physical store, is it the same product? Are they different products? And how does it differentiate from a competitor's offering? Uh, so the first one is the, our best selling product online is prob probably, it depends if you're going by dollars or volume sold, but I, I would say overall, it's our complete care pack, which we invented during COVID. <clears throat> um, it has something like 13 cleaning products in it in one. It is the most extensive cleaning care pack I think you can find in the world, I like to say, uh, and, uh, but you might have to fact check me. Um, and uh, with that, you know, what we're trying to sell is that, that you would be able to clean sneakers as well as us because it's literally everything uh, we use in store. Um, 
it isn't the best selling product in store. Uh, the reason is because most people that come in store want the advice and the service. So we don't do too much retail from the store. Um, from the store, it tends to be quicker items to grab and go, um, like our waterproofing spray after they get a clean or a clean, uh, a clean kit in case I want to do it the next time. But they don't really sort of go, hey, sell me 13 products at once. Um, when our customers online have more time to shop around, they, they, they pick that up. Um, the point of difference is that we use, we use all our products. So if our, like, we continuously want to improve our products to be the best because if they suck, we, we, we hate our lives. We've got to clean 25,000 shoes with really crappy products, you know? Um, and you know, the, the main point of difference as well is that we're, after you buy a product, we're here to, we're here to help you. Um, if you go to any other big retail store, uh, footwear store, um, your Foot Locker and JDs, and you just buy a sneaker kit, kit. The guys there won't know how to use it probably. And after you buy it, that's it. See you later. You know, so um, we're here to do it. We've got information online, and even if you feel like you need to call us or or email us or message us, we're here to support you the whole way because our goal is to help you clean your shoes. Amazing. Now I've got a four bundle question, which can go between the Oof. two of you. Uh, but all within theme. So number one, who do you consider to be your biggest competitors? Uh, how do you intend to protect the sneaker laundry IP moving forward? Uh, how do you intend to deal with copycats? And how do you intend to maintain longevity in this space? All thematically very similar. Uh, yeah, I'd love to, to know your thoughts on that. I've got ADHD, so I've forgotten two of the questions already. I think Chase might have to pick this one. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i forgot a couple of the questions as well um our competitors i mean like look the uh, copycats are everywhere already if i'm being totally honest with you you know like th this this type of work and this type of like idea is very american it's a very american uh thing so there's a lot of competitors but not in australia at the moment <laughs> if that makes sense um but people over there i mean who would, who would be a good competitor to us? Uh, <clears throat> I think I think the way we would break it down is perhaps um, on a product front and on a service front. Yeah, there's very few businesses oh. that in there might be one or two businesses in the world. I think right now maybe like Jason Mark, for example, that has a shoe cleaning location um, as well as a full product line. Yeah. Um, not a really a full product line. I think they have about two or three two or three products that they actively stock being like a sneaker cleaning kit and sneaker wipes perhaps and a waterproofing spray. So probably like three products in their product line, which they stock worldwide. Um, so I think we've taken a very different route where we do want to actually stock a wide range of products as painful as it is to maintain a really wide range of products, but because there are a lot of people out there with very specific problems with their sneakers. So it, when we, like to remain competitive by continuing to innovate and continue to solve problems as they come up, uh, no matter how specific they are. Um, to give you guys an example of a very specific problem, uh, Balenciaga released a shoe uh, a few years ago called a Speed Runner, um, and the the rubber midsole uh, after a few wears would just crack and the paint would peel off. And this is what is it, a twelve hundred dollar shoe or thirteen hundred dollar shoe? So we had customers messaging us all the time about this, and I think we are the only people to have solved this problem uh, by releasing uh, a Balenciaga speedrunner paint for exactly color match that shoe. You know, that's one of the, that, that's one of the ways that we are really passionate about in space and why we, we feel we'll always have a competitive edge going forward because that's the mentality we're going to have as we approach bigger and bigger problems. And um, that's a really great answer. And I'm just having a look because there's been a few other questions that have come through about competitors, other competitors entering the market um, and IP. Are you planning to have protections on IP in the um, creation of your products? So uh, with the creation of our products, the reason why we haven't already protected the formulations of our products is because we've revived formulation twice. Um, and we're the kind of people that I always believe you can be better. Um, I think the formulation of IP now is expensive as a small business um, and we're still confident that down the track we can always find a way to improve our products. So it's not something we want to pigeonhole ourselves into right now. We have protected our IP with our domains and our trademarks and as we, as part of our international expansion costs, a, lot, uh, a portion of it will go towards uh, protecting our trademark uh, and uh, internationally. We will 
uh, once we have uh, systems more refined, we will probably try to protect our systems and processes as well. Um, I did, uh, sorry, we didn't address the question. I think now it's coming back to me about copycats. Um, we, I, I personally believe that the industry is far from saturation. Um, we, the reason why we put all our information out there knowingly is because we know that competitors will use our information to, 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 to grow their business quicker. Um, and definitely after all the news coverage in the last week or two, we, we expect many copycats to be coming up to the market. Um, the thing is that we want, we want people to come into the industry. Um, for the last four years, marketing shoe cleaning as a solo business has been tiring. Um, it's expensive uh, to educate customers to clean it. And we believe in a healthy support for people to come into, uh, to come into the industry and grow this industry together. Um, and in fact, a lot of people that are planning to do that have emailed us and they're very honest. They go, I want to start something in who knows wherever. Uh, can you sell me your sink cleaning products at? You know wholesale price and we're more than happy to do that um because that's what is going to help grow the industry and we're always going to be the pioneers of this industry that we're all growing together i think that's a much better way to approach it than sort of try to shut people out from the industry i guess yeah fantastic uh, i'm having a look at through some of the questions that are coming through as you're answering them as well i'm going to try and bundle the questions into some sections so it's flowing as well as i can um, I do want to spend a little bit more time on the competitor questions because people do have questions about that. Uh, one of the questions that's come through is how are you going to compete with other well-established international shoe care brands like Shoe, MGK and Sneaker Lab, uh, especially if you plan to expand internationally. Do you have any more comments on that um, on top of what you've already sort of mentioned or a little bit more information on your expansion plans be available in the offer document? Absolutely. So, um... Shoe MGK I've never heard of, so uh, but Sneaker Lab I uh, we we have heard of. Um, I I would like to say on a few different fronts, uh, our products are generally more affordable than Sneaker Lab. Um, we have a much wider range that tackles a much wider range of problems as well, and our business model today is actually a multi-channel offering. Um, so it's yes you, you yes you get the products you compete on that front, but with the products and uh, we have a really wide range of products and as well as um, our, our ability to open stores and train staff quicker and, and clean shoes more efficiently. Um, we believe our business model is, is on the back end is tuned a lot better than uh, most people in the market. I think that with, with the money we're about to raise now, we can take that and sort of um, tackle Australia and internationally as well. And with your year to date figure of just over $200,000 so far, well done. This is an amazing achievement for year to date, and we're only just hitting March. Uh, one. Uh, um, no, sorry, but it was half year. Oh, half year. December. Yeah. Oh, half, half financial year, half financial year 2022. Still an amazing outcome. Um, I know a lot of this information will be available in the offer document, and we'll talk a little bit more about what sort of financial information will be available to investors within the offer document towards the end of today's session. But one of the questions that's come through uh, is the breakdown between retail and online and wholesale channels for a lot of your revenue year today. What is your biggest channel through the sneaker laundry? It's been a bit of a seesaw. Um, Pre-COVID, uh, we were looking at something like 35% online. Uh, during COVID and heart of COVID, we saw numbers like 80% online. Uh, and at the moment, we're seeing a pretty even split between online and our brick and mortar, uh, our, our, Melbourne, our Melbourne store, for example. Um, we expect uh, as part of our plan to open more and more stores um, throughout the next 24 months, we expect that to tip a little bit into uh, more sales towards the brick and mortar store. So. And with the growth of the company in the future, is that where you feel most of the growth will come from? Um, at the moment, no. We we do believe we want to. We, we we do believe that if we get our store, if we get our products into big sneaker stores, that's going to be pretty life changing. We were pretty close to putting our products into our glue store before they got acquired by another company. Um, but we we we've seen the numbers and we believe that if we get you know a couple of big wholesale contracts and stock its agreements, we would actually um, the revenue would actually tip heavily towards wholesale as well. Um, but uh, we haven't seen the full potential of our online store, um, you know, not even close. And we believe that if we put a lot of focus into that, that's where we can get some really decent revenue. 
um, we have really high margins on our products. And so um, what revenue we do make from the online store, um, we do make pretty good margins on. Um, we always see it as a way where sure our brick and mortar stores uh, will work well for us. We work very lean, we open small stores with less overheads. Um, but what it does is it creates a halo effect to push customers towards our online store where when they do spend money, um, we do make that money uh, on, on a higher margin items. Um, and with our sort of in-store locations, we're just facing uh, increasing labor costs, but we're, we're sort of combating that with taking lower, um, smaller stores with lower overheads. And another question that's come through is a little bit more about customer loyalty. And do you have any figures on retention and, and churn rate, uh, both online and in-store? Um, not on churn rate. Uh, I did calculate it a few years ago, uh, but I haven't calculated a recent churn rate. Um, but on uh, every month, our returning customer rate uh, is about 30%. So of 100 customers that come to our store, 30, 30 customers are returning customers. So we are acquiring customers at a pretty good rate as well. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Chase, this may be a question for you. Uh, which sure. international countries are you aiming to expand to and why? Oh, um, look, really no country is off limits, um, I, I, I think is the best way to answer that question. Um, but preferably, you know, like UK, America, uh, North America to be in particular. And the reason why is mainly just to get our name further out there, just to continue pushing our vision and uh, like for, for me personally, it all comes down to the overconsumption and the throwaway culture. So it's just getting that vision out there and just getting as many people aware of that situation as possible. Fantastic. Uh, I'm just having a look through my questions as well. Um, some people have got some questions around the financing of the business to date and why you've gone to crowdfunding. Uh, letting everyone know you are, there are many questions here keen to know about return on investment, how to invest, things like that. We will definitely get to that before the end of today's session. So I'm just saving all those questions for the end so we can wrap up and tell you about what to expect next. Uh, but yes, going back a little bit uh, earlier in Sneaker Laundry's history, uh, financing to date and why equity crowdfunding now? So when we started, uh, when we, started, we sat down a couple of mates and we said, hey guys, we're gonna do some, we wanna do shoe cleaning. I, I came up with a pitch deck much worse than today's pitch deck. It would have been four slides at best. And I think one of it was a logo. So, um, you know, we, that we, we, we put together about $110,000 to get started. Um, and uh, so not, and none of it was debt uh, until today. Uh, we have uh, no outstanding third party abilities. Uh, I think is the correct word. Essentially, we have repaid all our shareholders. Um, and I think uh, I was the last one to get paid. That was like a sum of $400. That was about all. So, um, yeah, we haven't, apart from uh, a business, Amex, we haven't relied on any financing in the last four years. And we have just been putting our backs against the wall and, and hustling, I guess. Cleaning lots of shoes. <laughs> cleaning lots of shoes. We just go, we've got to clean more. That's all we just keep saying. We've got to clean more, guys. Um, so are there products manufactured in Australia and are they your, your own formulas? So at the moment, half of our products are being made here and half of our products are being made overseas. Um, the half of the products being made overseas are our own formulations because we couldn't stand the formulations that they had. Um, so we constantly revised it. Um, the reason why we make the products overseas is that when we inquired with local manufacturers, the minimum order quantities and uh, the scheduling of the products was just way too high for a small business to um, Over the period of time, over the last four years, we obviously have built the, the scale for it. And with this expansion plan, we actually hope that we'll get our scale to a point where we can afford to get it made locally. Um, you know, shipping times and shipping costs between uh, us in any country and being a little island is it's just way too expensive um, and many people involved in freight will know that it's been the most painful thing during COVID to get containers into Australia um, so we want to make the move to having stuff made in Australia which really ties into our whole story of being an Australian company um, the second it is financially prudent to do so um, but yeah it's something that we we just have to assess day by day but it's definitely at the back of our head all the time 
I have uh, a couple of questions around the cost of your services. And I've got a suspicion there are a few people in the audience that are thinking about getting their, their sneakers cleaned by the sneaker uh -huh. group. You know, when I've been working on this campaign, I'm going home and looking at my shoe rack and thinking, oh, you could get a clean and you could get a clean and you could get a clean, actually. Um, one of the questions that's come through is, uh, when cleaning the sneakers in your retail store, how many shoes can you clean in an hour? Or maybe how many shoes can you clean in a day? Because I imagine some shoes are worse than others. Uh, and what are the average costs for your services in store? And how many people work in a store at any one time? Well, wow. That's Go, a, Chase. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, the, <laughs> the, the funny answer, the answer is actually pretty funny because it really depends on who's cleaning the shoes, if I'm being totally honest with you. If me, I can do about 40 pairs a day. Yeah. Um, but I have, tr I, I do understand that not everyone is me. So that's why we made a process to make cleaning shoes in our store so anyone can do it. Um, but if you get, if you walk into the sneaker laundry on any given day, you probably find about one person upstairs packing orders and two people downstairs cleaning and doing customer service. Um, and as of right now, I would say you could probably get through about 20 to 25 pairs of shoes in a day. Um, and we have three different price points. So um, they all point to three different types of cleans, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we have a standard clean. That's a $25 Australian dollar clean. I'm not going to, I don't think I need to say the currency. We're all, we all know where we're from. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $25 uh, clean. That's our standard clean. Um, doesn't really do much for your shoe. It can, but it usually doesn't. It only cleans the top of the shoe. And then we have a $35 clean called the full exterior that cleans the entire outside of the shoe. We take your laces out, give them a proper scrub, put them back in. And then we also have a $50 clean and that's called the lot where we actually go into your shoe, clean the insole, clean the sock liner, clean the entire outside of the shoe. And then when the shoe's finished drying, uh, we waterproof it and deodorize the inside. So you get that shoe coming back. Like, look, we don't really promote um, shoes coming back looking brand new because we do like to manage customers' expectations as the, the best way that we can and also show you know our honesty as a business. Um, but the lot clean usually is what's going to get your shoes looking as best as possible in that sense. And um, yeah, far out. I think that, I mean, even before the seven news, it was we, we get new customers in the store every single day every single day because all of my employees are trained you ask them have you been here before and every single day there's at least two or three people saying no nope, never been here before first time customer and then they always tend to be a returning customer as well oh wow so yeah which it's pretty cool leads to another question which is managing expectations so uh -huh. the questions come through how do you manage expectations for customers regarding the outcome of the shoe clean uh for instance someone who has a very large sneaker collection uh uh -huh. maybe i think Oh, no, this person has a very large sneaker collection. You and I have that in common. Uh, there are some stains on their shoes that just cannot be removed. Um, and when it's a postage order, how do you manage that customer expectation when it is not face-to-face -face in terms of what the sneaker laundry can achieve? And what are your most common um, complaints from customers when working the sneaker laundry? Oh, see, the, the, what's good about that is that um, I'll answer the first one. The most, com I'm sorry, the second question first. The most common complaint um, pr actually provides us with an opportunity to bring awareness to like how shoes are worn down because there's a difference between dirty and worn. Now you can wear your shoes for five years straight and you're going to get scratches on them, maybe a little bit of maybe a cut in the leather or something like that. And a clean will never fix that. So it boils down to just having the education of materials, making sure that all of our employees understand what materials they're talking about. And just essentially, um, if we see a shoe that comes in, like we're not going to really tell a customer if they bring in a pair of shoes that they wore one night that there's really not much that we can do with it. Because chances are that shoe is already close to looking brand new and a quick scrub is going to make it look brand new. But you also have the people that have been wearing the shoes for five years straight. And they come in and they've seen the photos online just being like, I can't wait for my shoes to look brand new. And the moment that I hear that phrase, it triggers in my brain and I go, well, actually, I need to have a chat with you real quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we can't actually bring shoes back to a brand new condition. And then I point out on the shoe, like what will still be present, what will be gone. Um, sometimes I even take it as far as getting some of our products, bringing it to the front counter and cleaning a portion of their shoe where I do see wear as opposed to dirt, just to show them like, hey, this scuff that you have here, it can be fixed with other services, but just through our cleaning services, it's going to look like this. And I mean, it's, I mean, customer complaints in terms of managing expectations when we started managing expectations properly about three and a half years ago, 
Um, minimal, absolutely minimal. Um, I would go as far to say as some of like none, to be honest with you, if you manage a customer's expectation properly, they will come back with the expectations that you managed. Yeah. Fantastic. Definitely one in one in a few hundred at least. Yeah. yeah it's very like rare. It's just a rare. I don't you know. want to sound like that, but a lot of the times it's just, you know, you, ex you, you still explain to them. They just might not been in the mindset to listen to what you had to say that day. And um, so, uh, as you mentioned in your presentation and in some of the answers, the value of the shoes in your care is often quite high. So do you have insurance that covers any unlikely events that could damage the property you were taking care of, such as theft or fire or accidentally damaging an expensive shoe in the process of cleaning it? Unfortunately, accidentally damaging, um, there is no insurance policy we have tried. Um, however, we have insurance policies for every other thing in place, uh, fire, theft, you know, um, the building collapsing and a few other things, I'm sure. Um, yeah, but um, when it comes to really high value sneakers, um, we tend to have a conversation with a customer going, hey, dude, we wouldn't normally take this on unless you're okay. Um, you know, with, with accepting what happens, we're very good at what we do. In fact, we're the best at what we do. But that being said, you know, it's a, it's a $20,000 shoe getting sent for a $50 clean. You have to understand that we can't accept um, liability proportionately for that. And in your, oh, sorry, oh, oh no. In your presentation, you're mentioning a little bit about sustainability being an important factor for the sneaker laundry. So how environmentally friendly or green are your current cleaning products and what is your plan uh, around sustainability in the future? So our plan going for well, our plan going to sustainability for the future is actually to start um, really looking to every little thing that we do from our packaging to how we mail products to our customers and keep revising that to continuously be better and better. Our current solutions are really biodegradable um, and they're palm oil free and uh, organic and we're hoping to even further improve that. Um, we have noticed some uh, in leaders in the sort of cleaning solution space like Zero Co and stuff that are really, really strong in sustainability. And at the moment, they're my personal sort of role models when it comes to sustainability. Um, and actually race through virtual as well. That's how I found out about them. Um, and yeah, for us, like we, you know, we started looking at, so for example, we were using a lot of bubble wrap and was transitioned into, uh, you know, biodegradable, even apparently edible uh, packing peanuts. They are. Um, you know, <laughs> recyclable boxes. Um, and with our satchels, we are slowly progressing our satchels into um, uh, eco-friendly satchels as well. Um, so yeah, all these things that we're trying to do uh, over time. Um, as a small business, it's unfortunately not something we can afford to do. flick a switch and be like, hey, dude, let's go sustainable and pay twice as much for satchels um, and three times as much for something else. Um, you know, ultimately, it's it's balancing act between being able to provide an affordable service and affordable product combined. Um, combined with uh, being sustainable as well. But it is definitely something we have plans every single, um, every few months to roll something out to sort of make ourselves a more sustainable business each time. Yeah, we talk about that quite often, actually. Amazing. Now, I'm very hyper aware that we've got five minutes left of the presentation and there are some questions around return on investment, how to invest, will a recording of this session be available and what happens if my question was not answered? I'm pleased to say that we had over 60 questions uh, and unfortunately, we really got through about 21 of them. Um, so for everyone else's questions, I will be sending it to Chase and Eugene to look at after the session. And if you put your email in, they'll be able to email and answer back to you. Uh, just running through uh, comments on the next steps of investing, equity crowdfunding um, and the return on investment and future plans for, you know, sneaker laundry and how that all works. So for virtual, you know, we're an equity crowdfunding platform. So the way to invest in the sneaker laundry is when their offer campaign goes live, uh, which will be in uh, next week, it is aimed to go live. You'll be able to hop onto the virtual portal and you will need some form of ID uh, so we can check your identity and you'll be able to submit your investment application through the Birch website on the Sneaker Laundry profile. Um, by investing in the Sneaker Laundry, you will uh, receive fully owned ordinary shares in their business, but be reminded that it is a private Australian company that you are investing into. So unlike investing into a company on the stock market where your shares are known as liquid and easily tradable, uh, when investing in a private company, often your shares are considered to be non-liquid, which means that you're a shareholder in the company until the company uh, basically decides to you know, let investors uh, release their shares, which could happen in a number of scenarios where it may be an exit event, a company buyback, um, or another event that may be listed in the offer document as well. 
Um, in terms of commentary around the financials, uh, projected three to five uh, year plans, return on investment. So under crowdsource funding in Australia, because it is focused mainly on retail investors, ASIC has got very strict rules in place about projected financial statements or any statements that may be considered misleading. So for example, uh, we can't tell people that you're going to make a million dollars in five years time, uh, because if we don't have any reasonable basis for that, uh, we do not want to mislead people into the nature of these early stage high risk investments. So the sort of information that you will find in the sneaker laundry offer document will be the most recently completed 12 months of financial statements, their uh, company journey to date, the cap table of the existing shareholders, uh, information about the directors of the company and everyone who was involved in the company, uh, how much uh, percentage equity will be allocated in this round if they raise their minimum target and their maximum target, what the minimum uh, parcel size will be, and we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, very importantly, the rights uh, associated with your shares and also plans uh, for return on investment for the future. Now, because these are high risk and early stage ventures, we cannot guarantee that there will be a return on um, investment when investing in these rounds. So please invest at your own risk. However, Eugene and Chase, I know that you can't um, give any guarantees in this life and in this world, but for the sneaker laundry, very broadly, what are your plans for sneaker laundry? If you were to grow this business into incredibly uh, successful international business, your future goals, and knowing that you can't guarantee this and that more information will be in the offer document, is your long-term plan to consider selling out to a really large sneaker brand? Uh, or is your plan to start paying dividends to shareholders, noting that we can't guarantee a time frame in which that will occur? Or is it to maybe IPO and go into the stock markets? Broadly, you must have had a bit of a think about it. What, what is your hope for the future of sneaker laundry? Um, if, if the company is in uh, a position to pay our dividends and we have achieved our goals um, and it is in a cash flow positive position to pay our uh, dividends, we definitely would like to. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our investors since day one have, have also been very patient in waiting, waiting for dividends uh, up until today. Um, and that is, that is definitely one of our, our goals. The second thing, however, is that my, my dream has always to been to see the sneaker laundry be acquired by someone much, much, much bigger than us, a big footwear retailer or anyone that can integrate the sneaker laundry into what they currently have. Um, you know, we're going to reach a stage where, sure, we're in every Australian city, but can we have 10, 15 stores in every Australian city? And there is going to be, um, there is going to be that one person or a couple of people that can do it. And if they do acquire us and put us into the store, our dream is to be uh, a post-purchase service uh, for your sneakers, much like how if you buy a car, you send it, you can send it right back there for, for, for a service. We want to be a post-purchase service for, for sneakers um, and we want to be the post-purchase service for sneakers, Australia-wide and internationally. So, yeah, this is our dream to, to want to be acquired by someone much bigger than us. Um, uh, yeah. Amazing. And my final question before we wrap up is, is there a minimum investment size? What is the lowest that someone can invest in the sneaker laundry through the virtual platform uh, when your offer opens next week? We've set the minimum parcel size at two hundred and fifty dollars. So we it's it's strategically set to almost the price of a or the price of a brand new pair of shoes. <laughs> and for anyone who is looking to invest in the sneaker laundry next week, uh, for retail investors, that's everyday people. You can invest up to ten thousand Australian dollars in this campaign. Uh, but if you would like to invest more, you will need to provide evidence of wholesale status and then you can invest whatever your heart desires. If you have questions about that, please reach out to us at virtual using the help chat um, on our website. Um, but, you know, Chase and Eugene, I know we've run out of time and we had so many questions come through. We have saved all of your questions if they're in the Q&A box and I will be sending them to the sneaker laundry team to run through and to provide answers to it. This session has also been recorded. If you would like to invest in the sneaker laundry and you haven't yet expressed interest in their virtual profile, head to virtual.com forward slash company forward slash the sneaker laundry and express your interest to invest. And you will be the first to know when the offer goes live next week. If you invest, you can invest again uh, up to that $10,000 limit. Um, and if you have expressed interest, you uh, will get early access to the offer document before the rest of the public to review all the terms, financial statements and the plans for growth for this awesome company. Have I missed anything, guys, or anything else you'd like to sign off with? This could have been a two-hour event. Could be a two-hour event. They always could be. <laughs> um, a question cool. did come through, actually, about meeting you both in person or over Zoom. Um, so tell us, you know, if someone has a question about the investment opportunity, 
how is best to reach you? Should they walk into a store and have a chase to have a chat to Chase, or or send usually an email, or what's the best method for people to get in touch? I would say either of those. I'm I'm usually in the store Monday to Friday, and you know I'm I'm usually always there. Um, and then Eugene will probably tell you the best way to get in contact with him. Yes, I'm currently overseas, but um, you can definitely email us um, and we can set up a Zoom anytime. That's fully okay. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, both of you. Thank you everyone for attending. We hope you enjoyed today's session. We've got your questions and we look forward to sending the recording around uh, later this afternoon. Love it. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank so you. much, everyone. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye.